What's up guys, this is Ultima iDevice Vids, and today in this video we're going to be doing a massive battery drain test comparing all iPhone generations to one another on iOS 15.1. So whenever Apple releases a major new iOS update, I like to check in and see how the battery performance is again on all iPhone generations. And we are going to be sticking to the base model phone from each generation as including the Pro, Plus, and SE models would just be a little bit too chaotic for this video. First things first, as you can see all devices are are running iOS 15.1. Also, True Tone, Night Shift, and Auto Brightness are disabled on all these devices to create a level playing field. And as always, when talking about battery performance, the age of the battery within your device is a very important factor to consider. Of course, the battery life of any phone depends on the age of the battery in the phone. And as you can see, all the phones we're using in this video show pretty high battery health numbers. And the brightness on all of these devices is set as close to the same as I could get. It's particularly difficult to match the brightness of an OLED display to an LCD display using the tools that I use, but I did my best to make them as similar as possible. So rest assured, any minor differences between the display brightnesses of these devices is barely noticeable, if noticeable at all. And also, the volume is turned down on all of them. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to turn off the power sources that these devices are connected to, and we'll get rid of the power cables. And we'll kick things off with one hour of YouTube video streaming. So just like always, we're going to load up the very same YouTube video on all these devices and we're going to make sure they're all full screen and set to 1080p quality and we'll just let this video stream for an hour and checking in after a full hour of YouTube video streaming as you can see all devices are performing quite well with pretty consistent results on the latest generation devices and with the other devices just you know doing a little bit worse the older the generation next up we're going to move on to one hour of Instagram so for the first 10 minutes we're going to be looking through stories and for the remainder of the hour will be scrolling through posts. And if you know me, you know I always like to mention in this type of video that there's a variety of varying factors that contribute to how your battery performance will be. Things like what you do on your device, as I said earlier, the age of the battery in your device, also any background processes that you might have running, the brightness of your screen, cell signal strength, etc. all play a very big role on how your battery performance will be. And of course, I'm controlling as many of these variables as I can to get the most accurate accurate results. As I said before, the brightness is set as close to the same as I could get. Also, there's no SIM cards in any of these phones to create a level playing field in regards to cell signal strength drainage. So you should definitely keep in mind that in the real world, of course, factors will vary all over the place. But even in a hyper-controlled test like this, there's still going to be minor little things that throw each device off a little bit. So rather than interpreting this type of video as hyper-detailed percent point by percent point analysis, you should interpret these videos as just gauging overall battery performance of these devices on iOS 15.1. And checking in after a full hour of Instagram, as you can see, the overall same trends are continuing, with all devices still performing what I consider to be quite well, with again just that slight step down with each generation of device. Next up, we're going to head on over to Minecraft for one hour of playing the game. And pretty much whenever I run these tests, the iPhones get very warm when playing Minecraft, as it's a pretty graphically demanding game. And as a result, of this, some of the phone's display brightness capabilities can be reduced temporarily when the devices get too hot, for example as you just saw there on the iPhone 11, and this is done to lower the device's temperatures when they get too hot. And as you'll see in just a second, as soon as we move on to the next portion of the test, the display brightness on any devices that were affected by this goes back up to the original amount. This is just a temporary device temperature regulation mechanism. And since I only have so many fingers for the first 30 minutes, we're going to be interacting with the three newest devices, and for the second 30 minutes, we're going to be interacting with the four older devices. So that way, all these devices get the same amount of app interaction versus just standby time in the game. But anyways, checking in after an hour of Minecraft, as you can see, once again, just that steady decrease with each older generation, with the 6S showing a considerably lower percentage than the other devices. Next up, we're going to head on over to Safari for one hour of web browsing. And once again, as I just said, any of the devices devices that were affected by the display brightness capability reduction did adjust back to where they were before, as you could see. But anyways, for the first 30 minutes, we're going to be loading new web pages and scrolling through web pages on apple.com. And for the second 30 minutes, we're going to be doing that on theverge.com. And after a full hour of web browsing, checking in, the same overall trend is continuing once again, just with that steady progression down the line with the 6S just barely hanging on at 8%. Next up, we're going to head on over to Subway Surfers for 30 minutes of playing 
playing the game. And once again, as I can only interact with so many devices at once, for the first half of this 30 minutes, I'm going to be interacting with the three newest devices. And for the second half of the 30 minutes, I'll interact with the four older devices and leave the three newer devices with the game open. And after 30 minutes of Subway Surfers checking in, as you can see, once again, that same steady progression. And I noticed the 13 and 12 are actually 10% points apart at this point. And of course, with that 6S just barely hanging on at 1%. So next, we'll move on to 10 minutes of playing Temple Run, with ads appearing in between each round of the game. And once again, same thing here for the first half of this 10 minutes, I'll interact with the three newer devices and for the second half with the four older devices. And as I've noticed, the iPhone 6S tends to do when it's at 1%. As you can see, it freezes totally when launching this application. And eventually the pinwheel shows up on the screen. And I thought that the device was dying, but it turns out that it actually just crashed. And it took a really long time to come back up and it comes back up for just a split second on the lock screen. And then it died right after that at four hours and 42 minutes into the test. And after 10 minutes of Temple Run, as you can see here, the 13 is still maintaining that now 11% lead over the 12. Next, we're gonna move on to one hour of playing PUBG. So we'll get into the application here, start a match on all devices. And you guys know the drill by now. For the first 30 minutes, we'll be interacting with the three newer devices. And for the second 30 minutes, we'll be interacting with the four older devices. And five hours and three minutes into the test, the iPhone 7 dies. And a little while later, at five hours and 12 minutes into the test, the iPhone 8 also dies. And closing out the remainder of this hour of PUBG, checking in, as you can see, the iPhone 10R is just barely hanging on with the difference between the 13 and 12 widening a little bit more. And all right, with the first round of the battery test complete, we'll head on back to YouTube for our second scheduled hour of YouTube video streaming. And once again, we'll make sure all the devices are playing the video full screen and at 1080p quality. And six hours and 11 minutes into the test, the iPhone 10R dies. And checking in after a full hour of YouTube with the three newest devices being the only ones remaining. Of course, as to be expected, better performance for the newer generations with the iPhone 13 in the lead at 27%, followed by the 12 at 13%, followed by the 11 at 4%. And we'll move on to our second scheduled hour of Instagram. Once again, for the first 10 minutes, we'll be looking through stories, and for the remainder of the hour, we'll be scrolling through posts. And no surprise, the next device to die is the iPhone 11 at 7 hours and 6 minutes into the test. And after a full hour of Instagram checking in, the iPhone 13, as you can see there, is at 20%, and the 12 is at 4%. So the 12 just barely hanging on there. So we're going to head back to Minecraft for our second scheduled hour of playing the game. And seven hours and 56 minutes into the test, the iPhone 12 dies. And even though the iPhone 13 is the only device remaining, this test was designed to accommodate if other devices were still remaining. So 30 minutes into the test, we'll stop interacting with the iPhone 13. But anyways, eight hours and 42 minutes into the test, the iPhone 13 finally dies. So there you guys have it for the battery drain test with once again, the base model phone from each generation on iOS 15.1. And lastly, I want to conclude with a 12 hour standby test. So this involves putting all the devices to sleep for 12 hours and seeing how the battery holds up over that time period. Now, once again, it's very important that I mentioned that this test also largely, largely depends on a whole host of factors. Factors like any processes that you might have running in the background, cell signal strength, notifications that you might be getting on your device, and just a whole host of other factors. This is just a very controlled environment where all of these devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Once again, there's no SIM cards in any of these phones to create a level playing field in regards to cell signal strength drainage. And the very same notification settings are configured on all of these devices, as you could see. And with all devices charged back up to 100%, we'll go ahead and turn off the power sources that they're connected to. We'll get rid of the power cables and we'll just put all devices to sleep and we'll start a stopwatch and come back in 12 hours. And checking in after 12 hours, here are the battery percentages. And all right, everybody, that just about wraps it up for this video. If you guys are using any of these iPhones, let me know down below in the comments section how the battery performance has been for you on iOS 15.1. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.